I'm Robert Scobo, and you know I love my iPad, but today we're going to see Auditorium, which is reimagining music on the iPad. <laughs> So who are you? My name is James Miao. I'm a co-founder of The 61, and we're interested in how consumer software is shaping the way people experience music. We named the company The 61 after Highway 61, which was a road where folks like Bob Dylan left their homes to take their music to the world. Um, our first product was a website called The61.com, which was an indie music community that combined game mechanics that allowed uh, and encouraged people to explore new music. And I'm here with you today in Mountain View to, uh, to show you a new direction called Auditorium. This doesn't look like iTunes. <laughs> can, you, can you give us a little tour around it and sort of tell us what the vision was that, laid, that led to this new design and, and new interaction technique? Sure, so we think of Auditorium as reimagining the feel of experiencing music on an iPad. Um, so you might, you, have, you, know, you might ask yourself, you know, where did album art come from? Where did cover art come from? And it's an interesting story. So in 1939, a 23-year-old designer at Columbia Records uh, named Alex Steinweiss suggested to his bosses that they should stop selling music in plain cartons, carton slips, and use his art instead as a way of interpreting the music. And the results were dramatic. There was an 800% increase in sales, and the rest was history. Uh, it pretty much born, uh, gave birth to the modern music, uh, modern recording industry, and uh, you know, an industry that connected with consumers uh, on an emotional and inspirational level through really great tactile experiences. Now, fast forward today, of course, um, all that culture and texture pretty much was lost in translation when music went digital. Yeah. You know, uh, today it's, it's lo-fi, it's, uh, it feels like a third wheel, and um, you yeah, know, I, I, usually on your little iPod, you have a little screen, and it has a little picture of the band. Yeah, and even it. if you download an album off Amazon or Apple or off iTunes, it's usually um, all that texture and all that all those cultural dimensions is limited. It feels like it's being exiled to Adobe PDF. And um, you know, when you think about, if you sit back and you think, well, you know, what's a modern digital music experience like? It feels like a spreadsheet. So the you know the first question that comes to mind for me is, what kind of backwards world do we live in? where you take a genius like a Trent Reznor or a Tom York and you limit it to a single vertical column. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in January, Apple announced the iPad and I turned and I told my co-founder, Sam, that we were going to change all of this. So Auditorium, we think of Auditorium as a way of uh, taking all the disparate content of an artist, surrounding an artist, like uh, high-risk photography, artwork, lyrics, high-def video, interviews, and tying that all together into a singular, intimate experience on a multi-touch display. It's, uh, it's a bit ironic when you think about, you know, in 2000, while technology killed the record experience, 10 years later, it's allowing us to rediscover it through multi-touch. So now, what, what is this grid over here showing you? What, so this is sort of a visual representation. It's a mini, we call it a mini map, and it's a visual representation of all the music in auditorium. When you listen to a song, basically, um, when you tap a song, uh, it actually shows you a visual history of everywhere you've been in auditorium. Okay. And these other dots are representations of other users in auditorium. So this is all real time, and it's sort of a fun, emergent feature that we came up with to help sort of lubricate the experience of so browsing. So I saw a blue dot right there. That's yes. another user. So that's an actual user. So what's going to ha happen when there's uh, 100,000 users on this? <laughs> so right now we're, we're breaking it up into rooms. So there are 10, artists, uh, 10 users per room. And as users log off, new users will be introduced to the room. Okay. Um, now, do you get to talk to those users or interact with them in any way? Yeah, right now it's completely anonymous. Okay. And um, But, you know, we've in showing it to people, it's been interesting just hearing all the feedback about wanting to be able to at least know what the other person's listening to, sort of a playful way to socialize with other people in a room, and we're definitely going to explore that down the road. Okay. So uh, keep, keep taking us around this experience. Sure. So, um, so obviously, you know, uh, let me go return to the song that we were just at. So you can, you know, listen to the song. Um, 
we break up the information about the artist into these little snackable blips, so it's a more readable experience instead of you know a giant five paragraph breakdown of the artist. There's a few key buttons down here. So one is a really easy way to share content on Facebook or Twitter. And this is a history of everything that I've shared on, uh, on Facebook. Okay. So I'll tap this song and it'll actually take me to that location on the map. Now why are some uh, artists on the grid uh, bright and others are uh, subdued? So those artists are, those, well those songs are songs that I've listened to okay. previously. So and the bright it ones you've listened to? Yeah, it, it okay. lights up and it's represented on the mini map. Got it. Um, so we'll go to this song and as you can see actually um, when you turn the interface off, these lyrics pop up. So we call it lyric matching. Okay. And this is sort of a version one of this vision that we have of combining lyrics with music to actually contribute to storytelling. Because it turns out that a lot of um, great artists are great, you know, are crafting these great stories in their music and most people never experience it because all you're hearing is the beat. Yep. So f actually, you know, so right now, today, it's just matching the lyrics with the song, okay. but being able to actually play with typography and animation and juxtaposition is stuff that we're already experimenting with and hopefully plan on getting that into a later version. Now this app, is, is it a free app? Yes. Okay, and does it load a lot of stuff on my, uh, on my, uh, on my memory card? <laughs> no, so, um, so what's so interesting about Auditorium, so we came from developing web apps we built the 61 as a web app because that's what you did. Um, that was the platform of choice for a small startup. But what's interesting about Auditorium is that it basically has the same infrastructure. It's a, you know, all the interface is client side, but all the content is coming from a server. And um, so all these photos are being, you know, um, streamed in when you need them. And uh, we, we have a lot of really interesting ways to optimize it so that it feels like it's all locally stored on your iPad. Okay. Um, so, so keep keep yeah sure. So around. yeah, I'll show you. I'll, um, let me let me go back to the song real quick. Okay. So I'll show you like so um, you know a really simple way to. So right now you asked if it was a free app. So the only sort of simple monetization we have right now is iTunes, and that's just sort of a, a, a you know first step in the in that direction. Um, you can also see other songs by Priscilla on, in this case. My favorite features though are the video features. So. You know, you think about an artist, there's a lot of content on YouTube, a lot of content all over the web, but most people never experience that because you have to be a really hardcore fan to go seek it. Yeah. And so we find a really, I think we found a really um, pragmatic way to integrate that into the actual listening experience. So if you tap this, oh, sorry, let me, let me actually close that. So if you tap this button right here, it actually backgrounds the music, so it lowers the volume and it pulls up an interview in the bottom left corner. Uh, well, originally, I had my heart set on going to the Berklee College of Music in Boston, but it was just way too... So it's really fun because, I mean, you, you can read about an artist, you can so sort of experience their music, but this adds a whole new dimension. In this case, she's talking about how she wanted to go to college and that she actually applied to a music school, and they told her that she would be better off going to L.A. and pursuing her dream, and just being able to have that seamlessly, uh, have, have, being able to have that as a seamless part of the, uh, of the experience is really, um, really engaging. That's really neat. I, and it shows just how the iPad is affecting all sorts of experiences mm -hmm. where I can touch something and hear music back in the background, you know, playing. Yeah, I mean, I, I almost liken it to, I mean, developing for the iPad. I used to work in games when I was in high school and college, and it really does feel like a game console because you have all, these, all this power under the hood that developers can use and you have the benefit of standardization. So it allows the developer to, I think, experiment with new types of richer experiences, especially on the interface side. And that's what really gets us excited about, about iPad and, and auditorium. Yeah. You can also tap HD. And this is a high def version of the song you just heard. And all this content is streaming. But um, just sort of, you know, a lot of times the, the way we think of it is you listen to a song, you know, you might learn a little about the artist, you get interested in the lyrics and in, in the rhythm, and um, this just sort of allows you to go deeper into that experience. And it turns out, you know, for me, when I, you know, when I got the iPad, the first killer app um, was video watching, right? Because when you watch YouTube clips on your computer, it's usually in a window, in a browser, um, you're usually doing something else, and so you have a short attention span. Yeah. And you don't really have the ability to appreciate high quality 
video because it's in such a small um, window. So, you know, for the iPad, it's a full bleed experience. It allows you to sort of zone in and focus on something and, and really appreciate all the extra pixels on a beautiful screen. It's stunning. And, it, you know, it, it, it's stunning not because I know I could find that video mm -hmm. on YouTube if I went and searched for it, but it's stunning that you can flow from music to lyrics to video to interview in yeah. such a really interesting way. Yeah, thanks. We, you know, we think of it as, um, you know, when you use most digital music experiences, sort of break up content into these discrete sections. So there's the biography section, there's the lyric section, there's the photos, song. And I've always felt that these mediums don't compete with each other. I mean, if they all come from the same person and they all represent different facets of their, their artwork, you know, why not find a way to weave them together in a way that feels cohesive and, and engaging? Yeah. Now, this is great for discovering new songs. Mm -hmm. And new artists. Can I see all the all the songs that an artist has done? Or yeah, so you can so, tap. So I, like I like I like her. I want to see all of her songs that she's done. Mm -hmm. So you can tap the hard button, okay. and um, obviously it has a, a link to iTunes. But you can also see other songs that she's she's in. So I'll tap, you know, for example, this, and it'll actually jump to the place on the map where you can find that song. Okay. And it's really nice that the transitions, it brings down the sound of one song and brings up the sound, song, sound of the other song. Yeah, that's, some, that's a little touch that we um, sort of came up with as we were developing on iPad, just realizing that, you know, I think um, auditorium is very much about the music, but it's also very much about the way we present the music and the aesthetics around it. So every little detail was scrutinized when we were designing it and developing it. Can you give it. me a programming tip? How did you do that in code? <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, uh, you know, it's really simple, but it, it really has a lot to do with the way we stream our audio. So one of the unique things about the 61 is that we've never used um, third-party infrastructure to stream our content. And that was sort of born out of necessity when we started out because we bootstrapped. And I remember the first week we were running on Amazon S3, and I think just with a handful of our friends from school, the bill was like $500. And I turned to Sam and I said, there's no way we can afford to pay for this. So he actually wrote an audio infrastructure custom built for the 61. And a lot of those underpinnings have allowed us to deliver the streaming experience in a really unique way through our products. And it really shows through Auditorium. Very cool. So you, so that wasn't client-side programming? That was actually server-side? That, that it's bringing the music up like that and, and then... Oh, well, okay, so, um, so it's, it's hand-in-hand, right? So okay. there's obviously some client-side code that handles it, but there's also some infrastructure things that, that allow us to do that. Very cool. You know, what's really fun is, I mean, so I just showed you a video of Priscilla and um, you know, it sort of had a really great interview and, and, um, and a live performance, but sometimes we get videos where... You know, my favorite thing, I think, about Auditorium is just because the videos are all um, coming from an artist, you get a whole different type of, you know, it's never the same type of experience. It's always a different experience every time you tap something. So I think, I mean, that's that's pretty much the um, the main the high level or overview of Auditorium. It's yeah. just bringing all this different content and and tying it in a way that makes sense on a on a on a touchscreen display, and a lot, you know, do, taking advantage of the fact that we can do really cool animations and really great transitions, being able to you know move from one song to the other seamlessly. Um, well, that's really neat. Yeah. You can also move up and down, so it's spatial. And this is all streaming music coming in? This isn't music stored locally, no. this is all coming well, in. So um, the iPad allows us to have a two gig cache, it allows every app to have a two gig cache, and we do take advantage of it. But all the, you know, every time you tap a new song, it's accessing the server and pulling it in. Okay. How are you guys fund? Tell me some of the business fundamentals behind you guys. What, how are you funded? And obviously, uh, you're still in a in a house, sort of like a Y Combinator <laughs> company. But yeah, we're actually yeah. So you caught us at a really unique time because we're we're transitioning from our apartment um, to an office in uh, in downtown Mountain View. But um, we the company's been around for about three years, and we bootstrapped for the first year, and then took on some additional funding from Paul Graham at Y Combinator and Reed Hoffman and Joey Ito. So that's allowed us to uh, really focus on, on product 
and, and, and be able to de deliver the type of experience that auditorium has become. Yeah. Where do you think this is going? Are, uh, can I buy a concert ticket? Yeah, I can well, see some other yeah. areas where it could spread into. I mean, it's a first step, definitely. And I think you know our, our goal initially was just, um, like I like I you know stated before, to reimagine what music would feel like on this type of device, on this type of display, and and then just keep, keep you know keep developing out that idea. So for us, obviously, there's a lot of you know uh, there's a lot of you know, the, the visual benchmark for me is when I see Harry Potter and I see a book that comes to life or a picture frame that comes to life. That to me is the iPad, but for real people. And I think uh, we have a long way to go to developing an even more engaging music experience that, pe that I think is going to really surprise a lot of people. But in terms of, in terms of um, revenue, um, I think there's a lot of different things. You know, the iTunes affiliate connection is a v fairly basic mechanism that we put in just because... Um, there's no reason not to do it, but you know, I personally would love to be able to see as we develop auditorium if we could figure out more innovative ways to integrate commerce in a way that makes sense in this type of experience. Because I mean, auditorium is an app and it's a free app and it's a great music listening experience, but it's also a really great way to sample artists and discover them and and um, discover them discover them in a, in a light that you normally wouldn't on the web. How many new artists are going to show up every week? And, so and how can I tell that a new artist because it for the first week, this is going to be a great experience, right? But I'm going to listen to hundreds of songs, mm -hmm. and then I want to discover who's new and, and stuff like that. So we're going to, so right now the artists in auditorium on a pre-selected basis, um, our criteria has mainly been based on, you know, I think the artist that really shines in this format. So great songwriting, great music, strong visual identity. Um, most of the content is, is non-Big Four, so most of it's coming from indie labels, and you know we have a saying around here: progressive experiences go hand in hand with progressive artists. We plan on opening it up on an invitation basis as soon as we launch, and and, um, and we'll see where it goes from there. How, how does a band get in here? Yeah. Oh, I mean, so what, so what do they have to do? How how do they how do they get a hold of so, you? So so yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna put put up a link on auditorium.com, and it'll be a way to apply for for inclusion in auditorium. And and obviously, you know, like I mentioned before. Um, there's a certain type of artist that really thrives, and those are the type of artists that we'll focus on. Yeah. And do you help them and say, you're, you know, your photo's not high enough resolution, can you get us a better photo? Yeah, or? we'll definitely, we'll definitely, up, you know, I think when we're at that stage, we're going to um, probably release a set of guidelines and standards that, of what we'd like to see um, for artists participating on, on the platform. And if, you know, one of the big uh, music companies comes to you and says, we want, you know, Black Eyed Peas in here, mm -hmm. for instance, are, are you going to resist that, or are you... So are yeah, you, we're not we're not particularly zealous about 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 that. Um, we think of it as, you know, what if if this experience can add to your music and make make it shine even more, then we're open to it. Yeah. So um, if the Black Eyed Peas had a really really good album coming out, then by all means. And also, are you doing any hooks with any of the social net the music social networks like Last FM? I mean, there's a whole bunch of mm -hmm. them. Um, or Apple's Ping, you know, because I've been playing with that. It's not the best social network in the world, but uh, it's a great way to tell your friends, you know, oh, I like this band, I like this music. Uh, are you doing inter integrations with any of those social networks? Not at the moment, but it's definitely something I wouldn't rule out. I think being able to, I think Last FM Scrobbling is probably going to be a, I'm, I'm anticipating it to be a, a popular feature, but we'll sort of take it day by day once we get it out and, and scan the feedback. So can you, uh, to end up, is there anything else you're seeing happen in the iPad or music world that you'd love to talk to us about? So for me, what excited me about the iPad when, when they announced it was, so the interesting story is before Auditorium, we, were, we actually released a pretty, uh, high, pretty uh, a fairly high profile redesign on the 61. And a lot of the motivation behind that, when I look back in retrospect, came from, I think, my frustrations with designing interfaces for web browsers. So on the 61, it's a very high fidelity, very um, visual experience. And you know, I, at, that, at that moment, I didn't know the iPad existed. So we were just designing for that. And I realized that as my designs evolved and matured, that I was actually no longer designing for web browsers, and I was designing for something entirely different. So it was, only, it was very fortuitous for the iPad to come along. And for me, it was that aha moment, you know, I think when I got my hands on one in April, just realizing that this is the device that I've, I was born to create experiences for. 
Thank you so much for giving me one of the first looks at it. And where do we find you on the web? Uh, Auditorium.com. And it's spelled a little... A yeah, it's spelled A-W-E-D-I-T-O-R-I-U-M. Okay. And you're on Twitter and Facebook yes, as well? At Auditorium. Okay. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Thanks, Robert.